Welcome back to All This Math. This is Professor Parker. And let's take a look at what we're doing today. Today we got a, a short word problem, right? And wait, before I do that, respect to Norfolk State University down in Norfolk, Virginia. Respect to all the HBCUs. Um, Battle of the Bays. So shout out to Hampton University too. You know, they play that, that um, annual football game. Battle of the Bays, Norfolk State versus Hampton. So shout out to both of those institutions. All right. Um, you've seen me in other videos with my Hampton paraphernalia too. Like I said, I, I promote all the HBCUs. Um, just so happens that today I got my NSU Spartans gear on. All right. Anyway, back to this. The area, first let's read the problem, right? But if you see this problem, don't get intimidated. That's number one, actually. Don't get intimidated. Relax. Take a deep breath. And take another deep breath, right? It's going to be all right, right? It's going to be okay. All right. I know a lot of times we see math problems, we see paragraphs, we see variables. Our anxiety starts starts going, right? We got to calm down. We first got to calm down. That's what we got to do first. We got to calm down first. All right. Because what happens is when you get all, you know, when you get anxious or you allow yourself to get anxious, it blocks your cognitive ability. And then problems that you could otherwise probably solve or figure out you're not able to because you're so worried about being worried and you're so worried about being anxious. So the first thing you got to do is you got to calm down. So you got to, you know, like EPMD said back in the day, you got to chill. You got to chill. All right. That's the first thing you got to do. Now we read the problem. The area of rectangle RSTU is 36 X squared plus 25 X minus 25. It ain't that deep. Don't worry. Don't worry. I know you're worrying, but don't worry. The length of the rectangle RSTU is 4x plus 5. Which expression describes the width of rectangle RSTU? These are four expressions. All right. Now, area of a rectangle, area of a rectangle. Whenever I see a problem that involves area of a rectangle, I'm writing formulas down because I like to have my formulas and I like to be able to visualize them. Right, so you should have the formula for the area of a rectangle memorized, and the formula for the area of a rectangle is a equals l times w. I mean, I guess you could say w times l, but it don't matter. Usually, you're going to see l times w in most textbooks and in most online resources. Length times width, length times width. All right, so area equals length times width, right? So dig it, right? And rectangle RSTU. Now, because it's a rectangle. What I like to do is I like to just draw pictures. I'm going to draw a picture of it so I could try to like visualize this. I'm going to draw a rectangle. And it's called RSTU because those are the vertices. Each of those letters represents one of the vertices. The vertices are the four vertexes. Well, vertices is plural of vertex, but it's like R and then S and then T and then U. So this is rectangle RSTU, all right? Now, the area is this polynomial right here, this long trinomial. A trinomial is a type of polynomial. A trinomial is a polynomial that's got three terms. One, two, three. One, two, three, right? Now, you might say, well, isn't this two terms right here? It isn't this two terms right here? So wouldn't that be a total of five terms? Actually, no, because terms are separated by plus or minus signs. So this, even though this is a 36 and this is an x squared, and actually technically, if you want to get technical, this is really 36 times x times x. So that you could you could think of that as three terms, but because they're combined by multiplication, they're considered one term. So 36 x squared is one term. 25 x is one term. Negative 25 is one term. All right. So I'm gonna write the area inside of here. 36 x squared plus 25 x minus 25 right um we also know that the length is 4x plus 5 all right now usually when we deal with like a lot of problems dealing with rectangles in the area the area will be a number no variables won't be involved you won't have no polynomials won't have no trinomials or binomials the area might be like i don't know 58 square meters and the length might be like 22 meters and then you got to figure out the width right but the same principles can be applied even if you are dealing with a polynomial, right? A trinomial and a binomial, right? The same principles. 
right? Now this says the length is 4x plus 5. So let's say, all right, I'm going to call this the length. So I got 4x plus 5. Now what I don't know is the width. I do not know this dimension right here, from here to here. I don't know this dimension from here to here. I know here to here is 4x plus 5, and here to here is 4x plus 5. I don't know this. That's why I put my question mark right here, because I don't know this. But I can figure it out, because I know this formula right here. I know the area equals length times width. But I'm, I'm not looking for the area. Usually I'm looking for the area. That's why the formula is set up like that, right? But if I understand how to derive formulas, right, from other formulas, then this is not going to be as difficult as it seems. Because I know the area, but I'm looking for the width, right? I'm looking for the width. So that means I need, to, I need a formula that isolates this by itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this L by doing the opposite operation. I'm basically solving for W, basically. That's all I'm doing for real, for real. So I'm getting rid of this W. So I'm going to do the opposite of multiplication, which we know is division. So I divide by L on the right. That causes the L's to cancel out and turn into a 1, or 1's, which then we have 1W, which is just W. But then I got to do the same thing on the left side. I got to be balanced. In all equations, I got to be balanced. I got to keep it balanced. All right? So I got A over L equals W. Right? So A over L equals W. That's my formula that I'm going to use. All right? So that means I should be able to take this right here, this trinomial, and divide it by this binomial, and that should give me the width. All right? Now, one definite way I could do this is by polynomial long division. But what if you don't know polynomial long division? What if you don't know this? What if you see this question? This is like one of them standardized test questions that a lot of people get wrong, right? That's why I wanted to do this. Like one of my students brought this to me. We were, we were doing this problem in a tutoring session a couple weeks ago. And I said, you know what? This is a good problem for the channel. This problem is channel worthy. This problem is, is all this math YouTube channel worthy. I need to do a video on this problem because it hits on so many different concepts and also test taking skills and test taking strategy, right? So I could do it with polynomial long division, 36X squared plus 25X minus 25 divided by the quantity 4X plus five. But what if I don't know polynomial long division, right? If you don't know it, then how are you going to use that method? You can't. I also could possibly factor this, right? And then see if I can cancel something out with 4x plus 5. But if it's me, I'm not doing that. I'm probably not going to try to do that, you know, unless I absolutely have to. You know why? Because these numbers are just too big, right? That's a 36. That's a 25. It's a lot going on. I'd rather avoid trying to factor when I got coefficients this large, right? So then I say to myself, I say, you know what? This is a multiple choice question. Therefore, the answer is right in front of me. I just don't know which one it is at first, but it's right in front of me for real, for real. So, but if I know this formula, well, actually not even this formula, right? If I know this formula, so if I know that this must be equal to this times one of these, one of these, then I can first figure out what it can't be. I can rule out the wrong answers. Because check this out, 4x plus 5 is a binomial, right? 1, 2, 1, 2, binomial, binomial. All four of these answer choices are also binomials. And what do I know about multiplying binomials? FOIL method. F-O-I-L. FOIL method. FOIL method tells you it's a reminder. It like tells you what terms should be multiplied and in what order. The first term times the first term from each of the binomials. Then the outer terms from each of the binomials, then the inner terms in each of the binomials, and then the last terms in each of the binomials, right? So I'm going to use that, what I know about FOIL method, to figure this out without having to do polynomial long division, without having to factor this, um, this area, right? this trinomial, which represents the area right here, right? This is what I'm going to do. Watch this. I'm going to say, like, let's say... Let's say, let's imagine that I thought D was the correct answer. Let's imagine that. If D is the correct answer, then that means that I should be able to do this. 4X plus 5 times 8X minus 5. And that product should be this. 
the product of these two should be this, if that's the correct answer. I'm going to say it again because this is very important for you to grasp. If D is the correct answer, then that would mean, because of this formula, area equals length times width, that the length, which is 4x plus 5, multiplied by the width, which would be 8x minus 5, if D is the correct answer, because we're looking for the width, right, should be equal to the area, right? Now, I can try the FOIL method. F stands for first. What's 4 times 8? It ain't 36. I'll tell you that much. So because 4 times 8 ain't 36, so this would give us 32x squared. 32x squared, not 36x squared. So because of that, I know D is wrong. Just like that. So now I have four options. Now I'm down to three. Let's see if C is right. If C is right, then I should be able to do 4x plus 5 times 6x plus 5. Again, back to the FOIL method. First times first, 4x times 6x is not 36x squared. It's not. It ain't 36x squared. That's 24x squared. That's 24x squared. So that means that C can't be right. Because, again, if I multiply 4x plus 5 by this width, I'm not going to get this area. If this, if the correct, now the correct answer can be multiplied by 4x plus 5 to get the area because area is equal to length times width. So what we got to do is know how to multiply binomials. And we got to use a little bit of critical thinking. And that's what math does. So we're doing this problem. I'm teaching you how to use your critical thinking skills. And critical thinking skills are transferable. You can take them anywhere and in any scenario or any situation. Right? So that's another reason that math is relevant because it helps you to develop your critical thinking ability, which you can use anywhere anywhere and in any situation. So it ain't even about the math problem. It's about the skills you develop from doing the math problem. Dig that. Keep that in mind. I'm going to say it again. It ain't about the math problem. It's about the skills you develop from doing the math problem. Keep that in mind. All right, now, let's try choice B. If choice B is right, then that means that I should be able to do 4x plus 5 times 9x minus 5, and it should equal the area. Check this out. 4x plus 5 times 9x minus 5. First times first, I got 36x squared. Okay, but here's my problem. I can't just say, oh, well, the answer is B. I can't say that because A also has a 9x as our first term. So if I, if I use A for my width, I'm also going to get this 36x squared. But what about the rest of the numbers? Why don't I just multiply everything? Do the whole FOIL. See what happens. The outers, 4x times negative 5 is going to be negative 20x. The inners, 5 times 9x. That's plus 45x. The last, 5 times negative 5. Negative 25. Combine like terms. Because this don't look like that. But is it equal to it? Let's see. 36x squared plus... 25x minus 25. I think that's the area. And it is. That's the area. So that's proof that this is the correct answer. Do I need to test A? I don't. I don't. I don't need to test A because if 9x minus 5 give us, gives us this area, there's no way that 9x plus 5 could do that. I'm also, I'm going to tell you this. Even though when you multiply the first terms you'll get 36x squared, right? The outer and the inner terms don't really matter because the only difference between this and this is a positive 5 and a negative 5. What would happen if we had a positive 5? If we had a positive 5, then this positive 5 will be multiplied by a positive 5 instead of a negative 5, which would give me a positive 25 at the end of the trinomial, right? My area has a negative 25. So that's another way to know. You're still going to get the positive 25x as your middle term. But you're going to get, with choice A, that's going to give you a positive 25 at the end. All right? So I wanted to do this problem because it requires, like, some critical thinking ability. And also because, like, it's a test-taking strategy. Because, like I said, you could do polynomial long division to do this, right? But what if you don't know polynomial long division? Then, obviously, you can't use that method. You could also factor, but... 
I, I mean, I, I, and I love math, but I ain't even want to factor this. So a lot of times it's about working smarter and not and as opposed to harder. Now, if this was not a multiple choice question, then I might have went ahead. Like, I know how to do polynomial long division. Um, so I would use that method or I would just I would I would make I would have to factor. I wouldn't have no choice. But again, it's about having options. Right. See, a lot of people, they get uncomfortable when you give them different, you teach them different methods to do the same thing. They want to just know one method, but you want to have options. Just like in life, you want to have options, right? So in math, you want to have options, and then you choose the best option for the given situation. That's real life. That's a real life scenario, right? So make sure that you are practicing these types of problems that utilize a lot of different skills and a lot of different um, standards, if you will, right, within algebra, uh, formulas for the area of a rectangle, I guess that's from geometry, also um, knowing how to do the FOIL method, multiplying binomials, also knowing how to reason through problems and figure things out and back solve, that's what we did here, back solving. When I do SAT prep or ACT prep, I do a lot of back solving because that's a very, you know, important strategy to, to employ when you're doing it, when you're taking the SAT, right? You want to back solve, right? Because sometimes you might not even end up having to do that much math if you figure out what the answer can't be and using a process of elimination. You know what I'm saying? So this is a, this is a good problem, um, but go practice some more problems like this. Go get some more practice of problems like this, um, test prep, algebra type of problems. Ask your teacher, ask your professor or just do a do an online search for problems like this. All right. Um, shout out to Norfolk State and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.